grinding towards those tier 10 tanks within World of Tanks console this weekend has never been easier and that is because of the Thanksgiving times 5 event that is currently going on within the game all you have to do is literally play a tank once essentially uh, and then you'll be able to get the times 5 XP on your first win now yes granted that is only on your first win of the day so you won't be able to get you know uh, 5 times XP every single match but if you have a lot of tanks like me, you will be getting times 5 XP pretty much every ma game. And that is what you want to be doing. You want to be playing multiple different tanks every single time that you are playing to another battle. And so that's how you effectively get times 5 XP for pretty much the entire weekend. You know, if you've got 40 tanks and you can play 40 games in one day uh, and they're all separate tanks, then yeah, essentially you'll get five times XP so you're saving yourself a whole bunch of time so every single game will essentially save you four games worth of grinding that tank so prioritize the tanks that you find are pretty bad maybe they're a stock tank or maybe they're just a tank line that you're finding you're struggling very much with so make sure that you do that if you then put in conjunction with that the times three XP booster effectively you'll be getting eight times XP for every battle you play which is just ridiculous really uh, in terms of grinding through uh, the tech trees and getting up to those tier 10s. Obviously, you see right here, we're playing the Spar Panzer RU251 at the minute. We're trying to get up to the Rhein Metal Panzer Wagon to showcase whether that is really the worst tier 10 tank, as a lot of people say. Uh, but we'll have a look at that and see whether it is. Of course, we're also then going through the Panther. This is just my German tanks. And so, yeah, you'll see that there's a ton of tanks you can play. Obviously, picking up tanks that you don't already have the next one for is something that you want to do uh, recently as well. If we factor in the fact that you can basically play Cold War and be earning um, in the region of 400,000 silver per game. I don't know if we've got some here to showcase that. Uh, no, we don't, unfortunately. Well, we do 374,000 from playing one singular game, and that's without any ex uh, silver boosters as well. So that is literally playing a Cold War tank with no boosters other than premium account, uh, making me 300,000 a game. Combine that with the fact that you are getting this times 5 XP, progressing through the tech tree has literally never been easier within World of Tanks, and these are the sort of events that you really want to take into advantage. And then not only that, because you're earning more silver if you're playing in the Cold War game mode as well as XP, because that's also a times 4 XP event going on for the bottom tier within Cold War, but then you're also able to pick up any tier 9 and 10 vehicles within the game for 30% less silver, and that applies for any tanks that you don't own. So yes, this weekend I will be grinding my butt off to be able to get towards some of these tier 10s that I haven't already picked up, things like the T124, the T124, three we'll be doing review videos soon the Sheridan basically I'm going to be really working my ass off to be able to get the do all of these tier 10s that I don't own the T62A and then we can provide some really good videos and of course if you're wanting to actually do this yourself how can you actually get to tier 10 the fastest well I'm going to show you how you can and what sort of XP and why you should be doing it uh, in just a second by playing some gameplay we will jump into that in a second and uh, yeah I'll catch you there now obviously as far as maximizing the XP you can get in one singular game and seeing if we can get the highest XP that we've ever had is of course making sure that you've got the times 3 vehicle XP boosters on to be able to do that. We're going to get into a game now and we'll join you when we actually make it into a game with the Spa Panzer RU251. Now we are of course in Highway, so this is a pretty good map for the RU251, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a good game, and since we're playing live, this isn't a pre-recorded gameplay, we are going to be actually playing in the game and uh, testing out whether or not, you know, I think that the aim of these videos with the silver one that we've done recently, trying to grind out as much silver and show you what you can realistically achieve in, the, in this week and this weekend, um, with this video, we are doing the exact similar. You know, what can you get from an average game within World of Tanks? Because, you know, for the most part, if I jump into a game and have, like, a, a say, a 7k damage game in the RU251, I'm not saying that this will be or that I ever could, um, but if you do, of course, you're going to get a ridiculous amount of uh, XP, which is what I would expect if you've done a that much damage in a tank that really isn't necessarily that high of a damage dealer. So... 
I'm not going to say that that's what we're going to do. So this is going to be probably a very average game where, you know, we're trying to get as much XP as possible uh, fighting against some of those higher tier tanks because that will give you more XP uh, than if you're fighting against uh, similar tier tanks. So make sure that you're trying to do that at least uh, if possible. Um, obviously what you want to make sure that you're doing is uh, not getting hit like we did there it probably was a bad mistake I realized I probably shouldn't have gone up and tried to take a shot at the uh, Sheridan there uh, but I got a little bit too greedy and so yeah we paid the price for it obviously losing nearly one-fifth of our hit points in a single shot which is nasty um, and that is definitely not what you want to do if you're trying to get the maximum amount of uh, XP that you can within one game now Obviously we know that there's people over there because we got hit from there. So what we're going to try and do if possible is um, go down and try and spot. Now the problem with going down in this area is obviously there's people that usually camp up by the railway track and the hill area on the right hand side which is obviously the biggest problem I think with this map. Uh, there's obviously a lot of people that camp on this game um, which yeah there's no... <laughs> I'm not surprised because it does yield you some pretty nice results if you do, if it does work out quite well. Obviously, it depends on whether or not you actually played well and stuff like that. But yeah, yields uh, for some pretty decent games. But it usually means that your team kind of lose the game if you um, if you camp on the hill uh, too much uh, within your game. So there is that as well. Somehow bouncing off a <laughs> Rheinmetall Scorpion G. Don't know quite how that happened, but yeah, typical wargaming things. Um, the paper turret of the Scorpion G bouncing rounds, but there we go. Obviously, we've picked up 800 combined, which is yeah, it's a very average result in a tier nine. You would not want to end the game right here, so that's that's for sure. Anyway. What we will be doing though, playing in the light tank is of course trying to go for as much assistance damage as we possibly can. We have the Griller hit. Why would you come over? Literally doesn't make sense. Um, anyway, now we're going to get hit by the 60TP which is a, a real pain. Hopefully the Griller doesn't then come over again because it uh, probably will knowing some people on this game um, but yeah it's uh, a little bit annoying in some scenarios obviously we've got the 60 TP side here you know we can put around into him um, and consistently harass him which is something that we like doing in a light tank it's just constantly peppering rounds into the opponents that you want to take out obviously he's now out of the game and we can go after the bat chat who's now sat in or coming towards us obviously we want to get rid of him because he's the opposing light tank we miss it because we are have got a little bit of lag going on uh, as of right now um a little bit annoying lead has been something I've been struggling with since the internet's been probably one of the worst it's ever been don't know if I've quite had internet that has as much lag as this does uh, but yeah we have some problems with that so it's kind of annoying it does impact your gameplay uh, for that so for those of you I'm sure if you have terrible internet will know exactly what I mean uh, it does come into a scenario sometimes where you literally lose a game because your internet is not necessarily awful and unplayable uh, but it is kind of laggy, so the point where you fire is not actually when it actually fires within the game um, because there is a server delay. So when you fire on your screen might not actually be when it fires uh, within the game because your um, reticle and your actual firing is server side. So all of the stuff that you do is actually done on the server rather than the um, kind of other or actually on like your screen so your gameplay client it's not actually done on that it's actually on the server so often when you're aiming and they say if I quickly moved over here it says my aiming circle is there it will actually come out the side of my barrel that is all to do with the server side reticle and, and having that within the game so um, that's why if you sometimes when you fire and you're like why the hell did that come out of sideways out of my tank that is exactly why it's because of the server side uh, reticle that is in the game so something I've wanted changed uh, but it isn't something that I expect Wargaming will ever change on console I don't know if that's a thing but yeah Anyway, regardless of that, let's move forward and try and get as much damage as possible. We've got an E100. Uh, we're going to have to load the heat rounds here because E100 equals heat, um, especially if you've got the uh, side of them. Probably could pen with standard rounds as well in the side. You know, it's pretty 
Armor thickness on the E100, yes, it is quite strong, but it isn't necessarily that effective, to be honest with you. And so, yeah, what we're going to do now is obviously move uh, to try and get into a nicer position. I don't know if the E100 is then going to try and cross. So it won't be worth it for him since we've got an object 268 that's sat there waiting. Um, and obviously the other heavy tank, the Carnarvon, is over in the town somewhere. So it's time for us to be a little bit aggressive. We've dealt 2,500 damage, 891 assistance damage. It's not awful. It's not the best game. We're going to reload. We're going to not fire some more premium because we don't actually need it, uh, especially if we get around behind the U100, uh, which is something we're probably going to be able to do. Uh, the Carnarvon is now coming in, which makes it very nice for us. Uh, we can put one round into the E100. Yes, we do crash, which, you know, is not necessarily what you want to do. Uh, but we can go off to the Carnarvon here. If we can get one more shot into him, it will give us a little bit more XP. Maybe we can finish him off. I don't know. Uh, but there we go. One more. He's obviously gone into the 268. Who's going to finish him off because, yeah, that's not going to bounce. Anyway. You know, 167 base XP uh, in the XP tab, which means that we're probably going to end up with a little bit of XP. Uh, obviously, we have the times 8 XP on right now, as with you will do if you have the times 3 XP boost as well. And you see we picked up 10,000 XP in one singular game playing uh, with obviously the times 5 XP boost and actually the crew XP um, that was crew XP uh, the vehicle XP is 12,824 for a pretty mediocre game in the RU251 you know I say mediocre it's a okay game you know you just uh, it's not necessarily one of those high tier gameplays that you'll see on YouTube, but there we go. That's showing you what a pretty good slash OK game will be able to achieve you, uh, especially if you're playing in any of the tanks within the game right now. Now the next game, let's jump into the Pantera. We've got a times 2 XP boost on, so we're going to be able to get times 7 XP within this game and we'll see if we can have a good game. Hopefully we're not coming up against tier 10s because tier 8 is pretty much tier 10 now that nowadays uh, unless you've got the plus 1 minus 1 event matchmaker uh, on especially um, with regards to um, yeah getting in those tier 10 games. It's like constant nowadays if you're playing tier 8. Obviously, you do have a lot of premium tier 8 vehicles, hence why you're probably coming up against those tier 10s all of the time. And it also means that if you're playing tier 6, you're usually coming up against tier 8s, which is kind of how it works. It's very painful, um, especially if you're grinding through the tech trees, which is why when you've got these times 5 XP events, playing things like the Hellcat, the OI and stuff like that on the enemy team, the VK, uh, will definitely be able to push you out of those tanks and up into the higher tiers because, yeah, that will just basically progress you so fast. It means you don't have to play your stock tanks as much because, yeah, playing stock tier 6s against fully kitted out premium tier 8 overpowered vehicles is not necessarily something that I would ever really promote within the game obviously if you are a fantastic kit player you can still have good games and you can still outplay tier 8 tanks even with um, them playing overpowered tanks and you being in an absolute terrible one but it's very very unlikely so that's something that you need to keep note of obviously you know that's very unlikely that you're going to be able to you know full health for tier 8 when you're in a tier 6 but um, on a very rare occasion you'll be able to do that Obviously, within this game, what we're aiming to do is get spotting damage and actual damage. And then if you pick up enemies destroyed as well within the game, you're going to basically have like a ridiculous amount of XP. Because obviously, when you get a, f a damaging hit on the, f well, the final damaging hit on a tank, you're going to get more XP because it gives you the XP of uh, destroying that enemy, which gives you a nice bonus. And so, yeah, you'll be able to earn a hell of a lot more XP if you pick up, say, six enemies destroyed within the game comparatively to dealing more damage but only picking up one or two uh, you can actually get more xp and hence why on the leaderboard you often see people uh, coming above you even though they've done less damage but they've picked up three or four enemies destroyed within the game so that's something i find um is a little bit annoying especially when someone takes your kill at the end of the game or something like that it can be very annoying um but you know as part of the game you can't necessarily say that it's yours uh, because you know it may be it may have been that that person would have hit you and you might have been taken out from the game and so your teammate actually did you a favor 
but yeah i don't expect many people take it that way <laughs> i guess but anyway now what we've got to do of course this vanguard's being an absolute pest taking out or spotting us constantly which is something that i <laughs> can be very annoying especially when you're uh trying to <laughs> remain unspotted or at least spot for your team you can see we picked up uh, a few of them on the enemy team spotting them uh, which hopefully our team can take advantage of i expect that they probably won't it did mean that we took a, a couple hundred damage there um, but at the expense of probably uh, hoping to make sure that our team are going to deal some damage back to them uh, not necessarily guaranteed course we're bouncing rounds here which is very unlikely um, especially uh, we are going to wait for till we reload before we put one we're also going to then go for the next on the vanguard uh, who's now deciding that he's going to uh, mess up and stop I don't know why he would stop there obviously you'd want to change your angle super quick to be able to get into a position where is unexpected um, well you're not going to expect uh, that's how you kind of have to play light tanks if they've got the speed to be able to turn and actually face you when you're kind of uh, going around them you have to do something then unexpected to avoid taking that shell which obviously the vanguard didn't do he uh, he tried to uh, bait us by kind of stopping which didn't work obviously uh, and so we've managed to pick up um, him out of the game obviously that's a little bit of an analysis we're trying to just promote all of that sort of stuff within these gameplay videos to kind of showcase what you should be thinking obviously i'm not the best player in the game um at all you know there are plenty more players that are better than me but you know i've played 21,000 battles i kind of know what i'm doing now uh, equalizer coming in you know that horrible uh tank, well artillery i should say um but yeah premise is we're just trying to inform you guys as to some of the things that you should be doing within the game. What you shouldn't be doing is pushing up like this T28 prototype who's now regretting his life decisions as we're pumping him um, in the side. And we've managed to get out a full clip. Obviously, we spotted pretty much the entire remaining enemy team, which is very nice. And we are, of course, getting quite a lot of spotting damage for doing that. And what we need to do now is just keep spotting them because if we keep spotting them, our team are going to keep hitting them. Um, as long as that they're still alive which is the key factor there um, obviously we should be kind of um keeping some of these rounds we're going to take a full reload and now it's time to head back over the second ridge because we're going to get yoloed in the second when the re remaining rest of our team on this flank then get taken out uh, which is something that does happen uh, whether we'll make it over the hill i don't know we are pretty slow uh, we have managed to do that which is nice and we're going to now be able to uh, try and defend it from this position obviously we are probably going to lose this game which means that we won't get that xp bonus uh, but that's no real problem to be honest with you because you know we'll get some xp uh, regardless we're making some misplays here um but yeah dealing out that damage as quickly as possible we're gonna have the artillery probably looking at us because we're most likely the only one spotted within this game um but yeah now it's time to kind of at least try and reload before uh, we inevitably have the YOLO rush come in. Uh, we've got the SU who we actually had to fire out there. Unfortunately, still managed to put one into us, which is a little bit disappointing. Hopefully, this uh, Object 263, uh, we've got one behind us, yeah, and he finishes us off. We couldn't really do too much there. We had the whole enemy team, uh, and our team just broke basically i don't know what happened to the right hand flank within that game that went up the hill they seem to have won it and then suddenly lost it uh, it's probably because they pushed them down into the tank destroyers that are probably camping um on this ridge line here and then got taken out coming down the hill when you win the hill you want to keep the hill there's no point in winning the hill and then leaving it to then go down into camp and fortified positions that are down here which i see all the time Often people do that within World of Tanks, they win one flank and then they push into the well fortified areas of the enemy which then lead to them just getting taken out which sometimes you have to actually stop and go hang on a minute we fought for this hill that is the winnable hill happens on Malinovka a lot of the time um, I think it's Malinovka anyway yeah anyway other than that that was of course a pretty mediocre game we still picked up two and a half thousand xp which obviously doesn't take into account the times five for winning the game we are of course on our first marks of excellence and we did come top uh but yeah i guess it was okay so coming off of the back of that loss i guess what we're trying to now do is get a win to actually showcase what this xp boost will grant you and 
you know, when you think about most games within the game are going to give you 1000 XP if you win, um, especially if you've got premium account, obviously that can go slightly higher, you know, especially if you have then a fantastic game, you may be able to get 2000 XP um, from a win, but it really depends on the game that you've actually played, whether you've had that really fantastic game. And of course, when you do start adding the boosters on, that can go superbly high. And that is exactly what we're aiming to do here. We're going to actually try and play super sweat mode. We're going to really uh, focus on trying to do well within this game. Obviously, that does depend. We've set ourselves in a nice position at the beginning of the game. Obviously, we do have the horrible Lorraine 15550 uh, there, or 51 even, uh, which can be a little bit of a pain to deal with. Um, and artillery in this position is the bane of your existence. That's really what kind of nullifies this position. Obviously, then you get people that camp over there and often you'll get early spots within the game in this position which is kind of what you go for and trying to catch out damage early on obviously this ho ho is kind of taking a pretty uh, long route around um, and what we will now be doing is just getting out our damage on this VK if we can uh, he's now coming down we'll put one more maybe uh, unfortunately we didn't manage to and now we've got to pull back or at least um, pull back to the slope Obviously, artillery find it a lot harder to hit you on a slope um, because, obviously, the trajectory of the shell and stuff like that. If you're on flat ground, it's a lot easier, uh, but we've just seen him fire anyway, so we probably are pretty safe. Obviously, with them, we've got the Tiger 1 here now progressing. We've also got to be mindful that if um, these tanks below us decide to come, we've got to have some shells uh, to be able to deal with them. We put one into the Tiger, getting that final damaging hit, meaning that we'll get that XP. You can see we're on a decent amount already. Got the ARL up there who's uh, kind of moved up. Um, but what we will do now is obviously um, try and get some more into him. I uh, don't know if we will. Uh, but yeah, we've now got a teammate who's gone into him. So he's going to be taken out. We won't waste our last shell on him because obviously it's an auto reloader. You don't want to be firing off all of your shells all the time because it means that then you have to wait for that reload to come higher. What we will do though is go after the Tiger 2 here who's kind of pushed down into that valley area and if we can get a few easy shots into the back of him when he pulls back potentially uh, which he may be doing in a second that will be really really nice for us uh, and yeah we'll be able to get some good side shots we put one into him uh, obviously then he's pulling back and now we can just easily get some rounds into the side of him which we will unload our clip entirely and now it's time to just wait and sit back a little bit because now we've done the majority of our damage and we have to get up that dpm a little bit because obviously auto reloaders have better dpm if you wait till you're fully reloaded um which obviously you can't do in some scenarios because you may have a couple of people coming round. And if you fire in single shot mode, um, that's obviously the best way to get DPM because you have the lowest reload uh, and then also have the potential to deal all of your shots if you need to. What we will do, however, is uh, then go and spot the enemies. We do have that Ragnarok, which we do have to be very careful and mindful of because uh, obviously that has a pretty disgusting um, fire rate. Uh, we do manage to pick up the Tiger P, we've then got the Ragnarok who looks like he's coming this way which is disgusting because if he manages to get a few shots off into us that's going to be a lot of our hit points uh, but we do manage to spot him and we're getting a lovely amount of uh, assistance damage. Iron Rain's going to be camping in the base guaranteed I expect um, but yeah that doesn't really bother us because now we can go in and spot him and hopefully get that uh, extra damage. We'll put one into the TVP, yes we did have to wait and reload um, but that's not really a problem put one into the iron rain there and now we'll just go after um, the TVP I think and yes we did spot the artillery as well uh, but by the time we get to them we should pretty much be fully reloaded which is nice uh, and then we can burst out that damage pretty quickly we've picked up two and a half thousand damage which is not a bad result we picked up 1500 assistance as well which yet again is not a bad result so it's so all about getting consistent both xp and actual damage at the same time kind of waiting for this uh, tvp but i don't think we're going to get another shot off into him unless we go in uh, which we may do actually now uh, considering we basically can two shot well we can finish off both of them um, which is nice we're going to ram this guy uh, then we're going to go after the Lorraine over here and if we can get the final shot on him we'll get the damage uh, and then we can hopefully get some more XP within the game uh, obviously we knew we were going to take that hit because he's pre-aimed but we wanted the XP and the final bit of damage anyway so 
there we go we picked up a nice amount of xp as well hopefully fingers crossed uh, and that's going to showcase even more and justify why you should be playing this weekend obviously 1500 base xp which is okay game four enemies destroyed 2900 damage 1552 assistance uh, and yes we picked up 13.4 thousand xp which that's unbelievable really uh, that's going to save you so many games and yeah fantastic result really 75.5% uh, on our marks of excellence we're getting up there now and we still managed to pick up some silver as well so yeah that, this is why you want to be playing the game this weekend um, and make sure that you do get on obviously it's Thanksgiving but definitely enjoy that first and hopefully I will see you within the game and hopefully I'll see you in the next video if you want to check out how to earn that tons of silver that we covered yesterday then be sure to have a look at that um, and yeah I'll link that on screen right now other than that have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week and I hope to see you in that next one goodbye